I is here right now. I want to see from a female because even, let's go even deeper right now. When you're on the road and somebody gets killed, a guy gets killed, it's the guy, he's gone. You know who has to bear that burden now? The women, his mom, his baby mother, his wife. Y'all don't understand sister. the burden of doing dumb shit. When you are gone because of prison or death, y'all don't even understand the strain that that put on the community, on your immediate family. You're killing us. Little motherfuckers, you're killing us. And we gotta got to talk about here. it. Hey. Hi. Good afternoon. How are you doing today? I'm fine. I just woke up at 7 o'clock here in South Korea. I'm so glad that he picked you. You're going to say something so eloquent. Please go ahead and talk. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been supporting you all for this live. First of all, thanks for having me. Um, being, I use my platform. I'm a singer, so a writer. I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. Um, but I'm a victim. I still say victim, but also survivor of sexual abuse from different people, different times of my life, from the age of about two and a half. This is about to get very awkward, guys. If you have trigger warnings, please come off here because get I'm off the live. To... Get off the live. If you got right? trigger warnings, get off. I grew up in church for about 18, 17 years of my life. And religion plays a huge part of silencing especially black folks, our black community, right? That's a big thing. Reason being why they don't want the shame, one. And the second reason is God will deal with it. Forgive and forget, right? So you have my, I was like, what? Just starting preschool and my uncle coming in my mouth at three years old. I knew what that semen taste, tasted like, right? And that happened with his daughter, it happened with some of my other, I, my wife, his wife still stuck with him. It's been over 25 years they've been married. Everybody knows in the community. I did a live calling out the first name. And not only that, it was my cousin. We all grew up around this, but we neglect. First of all, parenting is such an important thing. And I was just saying, while she couldn't speak up then because he was emotionally abused in that, in that situation. You can't talk. You can't talk to your parents like that. They're going to slap the shit out of you. You cannot disrespect your parents. You can barely ask questions. Don't ask questions. It's my way. I say it like this. Go and do your work. Go and do something else. Right? And as a musician, and I'm coming back to what well, she said with the, the, the low frequency music. You ever drive in your car and you're like, okay, fuck. You're listening to Frank Sinatra or some chill shit. And that good shit. And then you switch up to something on the billboard and you're like, all of a sudden you're kind of aggressive. Your road rage intensified. You're that shit. <laughs> you're, 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 you're like, fuck you. I'm, I'm, I realize that that shit affects music is a weapon. You either use it for good or you use it for bad. And I'm using music. I'm creating music that speaks to the souls of people because we have so much people hurting. And with this COVID shit that went down, I realized that will be, mm. that's resurfacing. If you didn't get a chance to face yourself right now during this whole COVID time and grow, what are we doing here? If you can't see the real people in your life that fucking checks for you, what are you doing here? If you don't see the things in our own culture and society that hinders our growth, what are you doing here? If you don't see how we are all connected, what you do indirectly or directly affects me. What are you doing here? I'm pushing the mindfulness. I'm pushing self-awareness. People like to say, be woke. Don't be fucking woke. Be aware. Aware. It's a process. Continuous. You know? I'm pushing back on your thoughts. Sorry to talk so long, but on mental health. Mental health is a real fucking thing. You cannot make people happy if you are not happy. One. Two, you cannot make people happy if they don't want to be fucking happy. Take care of yourself. Take care of your body and tune into your spirit, your energies. That shit is real. Energy is real. Y'all, don't feel bad to take care of yourself. People say selfishness, especially if you're a parent. Watch how you take care of yourself, but you be like, dude, you don't mind my business. I know. If I'm not happy, if I'm not right in my mind, I can't be, I can't function as a good wife. I can't function as a good mother. I can't function good for myself. 
you know and that's just all what i have to say with gun violence in the caribbean you only need to cut that shit out because we just killing ourselves and looking fucking stupid for it i have to say there's no way we're going to level up with all the beautiful paradise we have the sun the, the the rum the culture we have the caribbean is one of the best places on the earth for everything in one place but we can't even see each other right because of effects of slavery coming into that when the the the, the spaniards yeah christopher columbus came in and the africans were the slaves but the indentured uh, laborers the indians they were right you don't want them working together so they found a way to separate the indians from the africans to keep peace for them and and make the indians superior to the african and now still every time election time comes around it's a uh, you you better than me because you know you're indian and i'm an african and then man it's just so much a bullshit that i i guess that has brought up to the surface since covid is here again if you didn't take the time to face yourself during this covid you still have time because i don't think they're traveling they opening traveling restrictions soon surround yourself with positivity question shit don't do, do the things don't do the same shit that you grow up learning to be okay question the norm why is that okay talk to your children with respect at eye level and allow them to express themselves and stop forming it them into what you think they should be or not be listen to what they say i'm saying guide them i'm not saying to let them go off the rails but treat your children from young also with respect because then you have them growing up accepting fucking abuse settling for less not knowing their worth shit like that i just so passionate about all of this shit because of of we were not educated properly we're not practicing mindfulness self awareness re religious trauma is real hello and slavery still there still effects of slavery and music is a powerful thing watch how that that just seeps into your mind and you're not even aware of it so that's just all i have to say you know try to understand victims of sexual abuse as well that shit is real it's happening very often and wait 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 before i finish if you know sexual abuse is happening and you don't say anything you are a complice to that motherfucking shit just like when murder happens and you don't say shit you are equally charged in the court so deal with that put that in your pipe and smoke it if you're fucking no shit like that happening sorry that's shit i so i'm done um muscle go ahead muscle go ahead no i was saying well 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 said and i think again it's covid has been a blessing in disguise because pre covid None of us, any of us in this live right now on screen or in here would be having this type of dialogue amongst two, three, four or five hundred people. It's because right now we're fed up of what's going on and we really have time to look into ourselves and see what we went through and understand that that wasn't right, boss, at mm -hmm. all. In At no level, it was not right. Man, so guys, this is this is this is probably the heaviest conversation I've had in a long time, man. Bro. And I'm I'm not ashamed to have it online, but I'm starting to wonder if I even should. Um Yeah, this one's super heavy, man. And just to hear someone else's story, I applaud you. I love you. I have nothing but admiration for you and I know how many people that have just heard you say anything, what you just said, have just been absolutely floored and are now reflecting and thinking and being on, in tune with their inner self, triggered by something that you've said. And the inspiration level is probably so high right now. The motivation level is probably so high right now. Before you go, I just want to say one thing. And that is, I realized, and shout out to my brethren, Javon. I would love to get him in here. I realized, you see shame? You see shame, man? Because I've carried that, right? Not doing anything to stop my dad from molesting my, my, my sister. I carried that shame. When she died, I felt like I killed her. 
And that's a fact. I'm just speaking the honest truth. Right? And, um, you know, I realized, man, you see when you grow up in the ghetto <laughs> and you don't have actual physical things, you, you don't have anything, you see shame, it's like a currency. And once you get that shame, you feel like you're the brokest person in the world. And so you do everything you can to avoid being broke. And so shame is it's, it's like you have nothing and then you have below nothing when you have shame. And so I understand why we duck from facing the hmm. things that are happening in our community mm. because we have no currency hmm. and we have no way to show people that we okay and if we allow them to see us in a moment of weakness or with some shame it's basically like you have now become the crackhead you've become extradited you've become this this disease that nobody wants to get around because you're you're dysfunctional you're broken and we don't want to catch your brokenness no they don't they don't so we walk away from you and so no one wants to be walked away from in a situation where they have so little and so i say this to say to everybody man check it man you see shame it no longer has the power it used to have. Mm -mm. And I say that because it does take declaring these things 100%. for everybody to be on the same page of the value of something. Yeah. If nobody's saying it, the value is no longer there. And it's never there, I mean. <laughs> and I say this and I speak it. And I hope everybody holds what I'm saying to their chest. Shame no longer has any value. It no Zero. longer holds any power over any of us. Zero. And if you have something that you have been holding to your chest, that you are ashamed for other people to know about, and you're allowing it to kill you, mm -hmm. you're allowing it to hurt you, you're allowing it to hurt people around you, I ask you to understand with the words I just said and to feel it. And to feel that it no longer has the power that we have been giving it for so many decades. That's all I'm going to say. Fuck. Face it's your so demons, guys. Face your demons, yeah. That's the only way we grow. That's the only way we grow. That's the only way we grow. Growth is uncomfortable. It will hurt. It will make you scared. But the minute you face that, the minute you face your, your fears, you're growing, guys. You're growing. Everybody's experience is the reason they are why they are. Everybody has different but it's like I understand 10,000% what you mean because fuck man I wasn't prepared to have this conversation today. yeah man but you know guys <laughs> I'm down to like just get off the live I ain't even gonna lie um, you know I mean I'm hoping that everybody finds some benefit from this but uh yeah, I didn't know this was going to happen today. Like this. Um Man, you know, I'm 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 fully uh I'm fully in tune though, man. You know what I'm saying? And uh you know, a good conversation, man, it's never been a bad a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, let's 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 continue to, to to see, you know, who else can jump in and share. 
Um, I'm probably not going to say much, but, um, you know, I appreciate what I just heard because it allowed me to be able to probably um, connect with a community of people that I, I think um, I wouldn't have been able to connect to. And I, I, I applaud you for your braveness and for your um, strength to be able to come on here and even just say, you know, anything at all, but much less say something that um, I know has just affected me and, um, you know, and, and now inspires and motivates um, myself, man. And I appreciate you so much. And y'all definitely go check out her music. She is so fire, y'all. She's so fire. So, so, so fire. Um, Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Love to you, man. Thank love to you. you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, love to you. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, have a good one. Thank you. Um, you too. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Leave this thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think you have to You have to delete you have yourself. To I'm looking for it right now. Yeah, it's a weird thing. It might be an X in the top left direction. Oh, <laughs> Okay, well, okay, 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 got it. Got it. Yeah, yeah, all right, thank you. Walsh, um, yeah. <laughs> you see the funny thing with it, even right now, you see me right now, for the last, from November, I hadn't had no haircut. Didn't have no haircut, no shave, and for the past two months, wasn't feeling myself, because I got crazy things in my mind, my heart, my soul, that... <clears throat> You don't want to talk to anybody else about it, you know, because of that shame. So you just take, you just keep it in yourself and you try to figure out your own way of dealing with it and figuring out how you could deal with it. Today, when I took a shower after I got the haircut and stuff, I thought, yes, I'll feel good. I didn't feel much <coughs> better than I felt before I got the cut, you know, because it's mm. deeper than the haircut. Understand? So... Yeah, this this conversation just went somewhere. Let me bring in. I'm gonna bring in a guy, Junior Dangerous, and I'm gonna bring in Lady Ann. All right, two of you guys are gonna come in, and let's see where this goes. This, but again, if it wasn't for COVID, we wouldn't have these conversations. Yo, great things, Dangerous, Lady Ann. Yeah, well, Yo, well, big, up, big up, big yeah. up, big up, big up, big up. How are you guys doing there? All right, Lady Ann, great things. All right. Big up, big up. All right, let me say this. Um, um, abuse, both sexual, sexual and abuse start from in the home. And when I like talk about my story, it is so much that some of them still not talk about. All right. My mother never want me. For whatever reason, I don't know. But she never want me. So the abuse start from my home. But my grandmother, as a piano teacher now, see the abuse. She teach me music, but she never teach me how to play the piano. My mother, it's when it touch 7.30, 8 o'clock, I have to take a shower every night before I could go into the house and go to bed. I mean, I have an uncle, my school friend, I used to come every morning. And me and them, they go to school together. Them telling me I go to St. Peter Clever School. So you must know me at about six, seven, eight. And me have an uncle, my mother, brother. And that man would scandal me. She stinks, she dirty, she no beard. And as I look at six, seven years old, I used to just cry walking to school. I would just cry, cry, cry. I hated that man so much. But I didn't say anything. I didn't speak up because I didn't know to speak. I didn't know to say anything. When I run at the back of the yard, I play and see my come in, I just crawl under the cellar, come in, and kick me and him that do me something and I never speak. And as a child growing, because of all these abuse, my father did try to have sex with me first. I'm going to talk about it. I was only 10. And he used to come get me and my sisters every Friday and keep us until Sunday. And one Friday, he only get me alone. Look at girl about 10 minutes, I understand it. And I remember about 2 a.m., me feel me and my deep sleep, and me feel my child force himself in me, and me jump up. And me jump up, him, him, me said to him, so what are you doing? And him I remember when I said, I'm going to set him pee. I'm going to go outside for go pee. Them time, they, him lived in the yard with Larry Marshall, the singer Larry Marshall. 
and me go type pick up here me stand up and me a tremble me a tremble me a tremble me a tremble and Larry Marshall is a man no sleep if ever a smoke a big sleep and Larry Marshall sit down and I need the custard up a tree and see me stand up and I tremble I tremble I tremble and come to me and say what happened to you and me only say nothing and him go feed my wife and me live with a lady named Joyce and him call her out and him say Joyce something wrong with the pick me look how she a tremble and me tell her what happened and she go tell Larry what happened and Larry put me in my room and go in there and raise hell for my father and say, carry her home to her mother now. When any way you're taking my own, Larry never make me go back in there. Larry make him carry me home. I say, if you ever touch her, you have to go talk to me. And Larry make him carry me home and him carry me home. And any him, him way you're taking my home, him stop and him buy me a butter crepe. Them kind of butter crepe I carry swing and him give me 20 dollars and him send me enough to send on to my mother. And I tell him, say, my son come and go put on the $20 and the crepe. I never forgot my mother. They don't under the pipe I wash. And I said to her, I said, Serena, and I tell her, and my mother scandal him. And that did hurt me too because she bring down shame for me. So as a child now, it scared me for life. It no make me like, man. It make me don't want to have sex. When I reach the age I want to have sex, I have to smoke holy power with me, I have to drink, I have to drunk. I can't have sex. Coming out of the music at a tender age of 16, and this engineer had to feel me up. The, the trauma just come back on me again. So, me miserable. As I look a young girl, I grow me miserable. Until today, day, nobody no like me because me, uh, me not smile. Them don't know me I go through. Them just see me. Them just eat me. Them don't know who I been through as a child. Them don't know who I walk around with. And... I heard you say something on the live, said the artist remember. I was just saying that to my cousin yesterday. Cause my uncle intent know that I'm a woman in keep call call me and more answer. I said to me, say, Annie. We are from why when you Are we all frozen? You yeah, guys were, I was going to was I frozen? Hmm? I was frozen? Yeah. You know, she said, and it really hurt me. So I speak up of me. I abuse to go to the music. In the music business, I was made it young, made it sex, me shape wood, made it pretty, made it up the whole package, and everybody they want some of me. But them did. and them yet me and them said a word because them couldn't touch me. They didn't know why they couldn't touch this little girl. This little girl have too much going on that she don't know how to talk about it. So, while she was me, you was a child. There's nothing you could have done. Yes, you could have said something, but probably you said something and nobody not believe you either. So, don't blame yourself. Just like me, I was a kid. I couldn't speak. I, how could I tell you? And you know what? Lord Marshall, me, I'm so rest in peace. Me come to music and he know me and he never tell nobody. I never heard nobody. Say, Lord Marshall, say, my father try to sleep with me as a child. He never tell nobody. Just him and him woman and me, and my mother, and my mother, scandal him, scandal him. I saw the public know. So, I'm not the only one. You have a lot of female. And then when I come out and I talk, you have female write me and bash me. Bash me. And it's so sad. Me don't know me end up with five kids. Me don't know how. But me get three that and a lot. And me grow them very me wool and to them like I'm a prisoner. To them a baby at 21 year old and she don't know what boy feel like. The first time I had me 22 year old, I tell me, she, she, she put up some say, guy something. And she said, she said to her, I say, let me, and she said, oh God, let me take it down because I don't want nobody to think I have a boyfriend. And she said, she said to her, I said, stop it. You reach the age of a boyfriend. Don't do this. Don't speak out. What? Me tell my kids them everything. They know everything. So, I don't know if that make me be, be afraid. Cause she twenty one, pretty no hell. But I don't know if that makes she afraid because I tell them everything. And I blame my mother for not wanting me. I blame her for the abuse. She abused me too. I blame my uncle. He cannot call my phone and I answer for the abuse. So abuse come in so many ways. 
But like me say, it's the first I ever talk about my father. I never speak about it. I speak about it now, catch me here while you talk. And I'm a blame. Don't blame yourself. You were a child. What could you do? You think you could stand up against your father? You couldn't. And if you tell the family member, them now gonna believe you because it's supposed to be family secret. Them friends are the shame. Parents will talk about these things to them children and not tell me. Cause are the people that we trust are them earthly. That my mother we came for nine months. We couldn't see it. We couldn't understand it. So I'm miserable. It's when we are grown. You, my comfort song was Babu, Babu, but me not like it for me. I break down and cry. That was my comforting song as a little girl. <clears throat> babu, Babu, Baye, Baye, Al Kambri, that was song was saying, No children, don't cry. Dry the tear from your better days. Are Those were my two comforting songs as a child. Yo, you know, I have one too. Jalive, Bob Marley, something there. Yeah. And, um, um, Oh man, what what sugar mine that song? I still remember it, man. But yeah, man, let me know that feeling, you know. Me know that feeling, man. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so so you know, do not wrong, not blame yourself. You didn't do any wrong. You sit. You know what I tell my daughter? If my father did have sex with me, I'd have killed myself. I couldn't live with it. If my father did have sex with me, I would have killed myself. And you don't know me here to talk to me right now. You don't know, know me. So what I did, thank God for Larry Marshall. But just tell him, but just all right, me go pee pee and come, and me just a tremble. So even though me a sixty, if me feel sexy, that man, I some me just a tremble, just a tremble. So me not bother, me not bother with the man thing. And me get holy part eight because of that, because nobody didn't know, because nobody never teach or for speak about it. So all my life going to people eat me lady and they stay like that. Because I'm not smile and them not know not what I go through. Them not know. So while she may have tell this, I said to you, don't blame yourself, you are a child. And who would I believe you? You couldn't go up against your father. And no care who you tell, them only believe you. Can you imagine me a me a girl walk with my little classmate in my man time, girls call my, my own class, tell them some stink me not be it. My mother never won, but me a fee beard. She said, be at night time and just wash up in the morning and go to school. And my uncle scandal me at the man like that. <laughs> so, me, my cousin Marlin asked me that day. She said, why not call him? Mama? She said, you ever confront him? Mama tell her, no, never. Because I don't know how to. I don't know how to tell him he hurt me as a child. That's all. I don't know how. That's messed up. That's just yeah, messed up. So, I call, call myself damage good because I'm damaged from child. But damage. So me come me used to just sit on and babu babu baba ya and I cry bab and nobody would understand. Thanks to Mr. Baba and if you sing that song for me. It was my comforting song. And I'll can bring no children don't cry. Those are my can when I feel happiness within myself and then me slung and sing and listen to. Yeah, so no, no kill up yourself. You didn't do anything wrong. I said, no kill up who you tell. They wouldn't believe you. They would not tell the boy I got strong and lie your tail. True. Remember me tell her that. Thank God Larry Marshall will believe me and never send him back around the year. And I'm sorry he wasn't alive to come tell us it's true I'm talking. And if his wife, Jaisen, where well, she then not the world, if she's alive, she can't come tell us on a lie. Because when Larry accosted my moon and said, I'm catching my man, I don't want him near me. So I'm saying, Chief, I'm saying, Jais, go find out what's wrong with that pig left him, you know. And I tell she. So I just, I just life. And woman bash me. When I talk about the engineer the other day, woman bash me, producer come out and bash me and say, I look hype. He said, the children are too small. And people could have hear me. If you lack, what you know about story? If you lack of everything, on the board. If you come on, if you come out, just my earphone. Can nobody hear me when I make nice? If everything is turned off fine at the headboard? You cannot hear me. Because I scream till thy kingdom come. Nobody cannot hear. And me have two sons. And me teach them well. Bless up, Junior. 
I'm not, I'm not re I will not tell a lie for nobody's children. 